most of us had been off and done films and done heaps of television and everything, and this was something where there was no money. Every apartment sort of got two people, and there's a budget of, I don't know, 400,000, if that, and it was just rip, shit and bust. OK, we're going to make this feature film happen. Let's go and do it. They improvised a lot. They, they had, the, with the, the, the tight budget, I know Byron used to check every... Um, docket that came in to make sure that everything was okay. You know, we, we took liberties and I think part of it was not knowing and part of it was not caring and part of it was the time. It was guerrilla filmmaking, you know. You changed your clothes in the middle of the field, on the road, wherever, you know. If it was too much for you, someone would hold a blanket up and look the other way. I mean, it was like... Uh, um, no frills. When you see how few people and what equipment was there compared with any, just anything now, and that looks like a very cheap film school set out in terms of what was out there in terms of the gear. We were breaking the rules, I and mean, we had to break the rules with the resources available and with the, you know, the limited crew, uh, particularly in the production area. And Jenny Day, God bless her, we, you know, I'd be on the phone saying, look, we've got to pick up that scene, we need these actors out there, we need these bikes, we need this crew, and we need those vehicles and things. And so it was a very small production office. It was basically Jenny. The quality of the movie is not the budget. It's the enthusiasm of the people who make it and the professionalism of them, the way they conduct themselves and the driving force behind them. And if they... Oh, proud of their profession and know how to do it right, you'll pull off a good movie, no matter about the budget. <laughs> the technique of shooting Mad Max was developed to a certain extent as we went along. 1977, there wasn't a lot of choice, you know, if you wanted to do high speed shots out of windows and, and so forth, and shots from motorbikes, and uh, there's only one way to do it, and that was to put it on the shoulder and do it. You know, the, the, the technology was around, but we didn't have the budget or the time. We had one camera, five lenses, um, one cricket dolly, and one crane on the back of a Ford um, F100. We knew that the film had to be in the anamorphic format because of the visual style. Um, we knew that we wanted that look of uh, the road sort of stretching to infinity with the telegraph poles in the forced perspective down the side of the road and the dominant white line. And that was much better portrayed anamorphically. Sam Peckinpah had shot the getaway on the classic anamorphic Todeo lenses and, and they were basically dumped down in Australia because uh, they have been wrecked. I mean, all the elements have been knocked around by all the action sequences and so on. So we inherited them relatively cheaply and were able to hire them. And David Egby and his crew were struggling a lot to work these very cumbersome lenses. And they were always falling in and out of focus and uh, because they were damaged. But there was one, the 35mm lens, which was the most reliable and the quickest to use. And it was a very wide angle lens and also allowed us to get low on the road and shoot and give us that, that great sense of speed. George wanted the camera in close, down low and wide. And certainly that, by getting rid of that peripheral top and bottom sky and, and, and ground, it's, it, it concentrated into, into the, the format. You know, it's a fantastic format. 